Steps in Naming Alkanes. Let's summarize the procedure involved in naming alkanes. Firstly, we'll identify the root name. Find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms, and remember it doesn't have to be straight, and apply the root name. Number the carbons of this main chain. Carbon number one is the carbon at the end of the alkane that will give the branches the lowest possible numbers. Two, identify the suffix. The only suffix discussed so far is the one for alkanes, ane, as in propane, octane, methane. Three, identify the prefix. We identify a prefix if the alkane has one or more branches. In identifying the prefix, we find the number of carbon atoms in each side group or branch. We identify the root name for each side group and add the suffix il, like methyl, propyl, butyl, and so on. Determine the alphabetical order of the side groups if there's more than one. For example, methyl comes before propyl, but after ethyl. Precede each side group with the number of the carbon atom of the main chain. For example, 3-ethyl, 2-methyl. Use hyphens between numbers and words, commas between numbers. There's no hyphen, comma, or space between the last prefix and the root. I realize this sounds confusing, but when we work through some examples, it will make sense. Also, when identifying identical side groups, use the di prefix for 2, tri for 3, and so on, like dimethyl and tripropyl. Using the steps just learned, we'll name this compound. First, we identify the root name by counting the number of carbon atoms on the main chain. There are seven carbon atoms in a continuous row, so the root name and suffix is heptane. Carbon number one is the end carbon closest to a branch. Next, we identify the prefix by looking at the branches. We have three methyl groups, one at the second carbon of the main chain and two at the third. And an ethyl group at the fourth carbon. Since E in ethyl is before M in methyl, the prefix will list the ethyl group first. So we have 4-ethyl-2,3,3-trimethyl, and I know the tri seems redundant after showing the 233 numbering, but they're not my rules. Heptane. There's no getting away from it. Practice makes perfect. Drawing alkanes. The IUPAC system of naming alkanes enables us to draw the structural formula given just its name. We will outline the steps to drawing an alkane using an example. First, identify the root and the suffix of the name. We've got 3-ethyl, three 3-methyl three pentane listed as an example. The first thing you need to do is identify the root, which tells us how many carbons are on the main chain. In this case, pent is 5, and the suffix, and like I said, we've only covered alkanes to this point, so the ane at the end of the name tells us the chain only has single carbon-carbon bonds. Next, draw the main chain first. Just write out the chain of carbons in a row joined by single bonds. Don't worry about hydrogens at this point. Third, number the carbons, then add the indicated branches to the appropriate carbon. The carbons can either be numbered left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter as long as it's in sequence. In this case, carbon 3 gets both branches. Whether it's the methyl branch on top or the ethyl branch, it makes no difference. Add hydrogen atoms so each carbon has four bonds. The hydrogen atoms complete the condensed structural diagram. Physical properties of alkanes. Methane is natural gas and is used to heat our homes. Propane is used in gas cylinders to barbecue steaks. Butane gas is ignited in cigarette lighters. Are all alkanes gases? The nonpolar molecules attract each other by London dispersion forces only, and indeed the small alkanes are gaseous at room temperature. 
Octane is the fuel you put in your car. Kerosene is a mixture of medium-sized alkanes used as jet fuel. The medium-sized alkanes have longer chains and the sum of the intermolecular forces becomes stronger. At room temperature, chains between 5 and 16 carbon atoms are liquid at room temperature. As the chains get longer, intermolecular forces increase the alkane's boiling point, so that at room temperature, 16 to 22 carbon chains form heavy liquids such as oils and semi-solids such as grease and wax. Over 26 carbon chains and we see solid residues used for asphalts and tars in paving and roofing. Highly branched chains have weaker London forces than straight chains. Even though alkanes are insoluble in water, they are soluble in other nonpolar solvents.